Hello and welcome to Big Picture. I am Vishal Dahia and today we will take up the issue of internet addiction. The internet is a global network connecting millions of computers. It has revolutionized communication and methods of commerce and is considered a boon to all. Though the internet has brought many positives to our lives, the ill effects of addiction to internet and digital technology are now becoming a cause of concern. As compared to 5 million in 2000, there were about 462 million internet users in June 2017 in India, and this number is further expected to rise up to 700 million by 2020. India's monthly wireless data usage also rose to 1.3 billion GB in March 2017 from 200 million GB in June 2016. In this scenario, the youth, especially students and working professionals, are more susceptible to developing internet or mobile phone addiction because they are generally the heaviest users of information and technology. Several studies have also revealed the problem of internet addiction. So what are the various aspects of internet addiction? How is it affecting us? And what can we do to tackle it? For more on this, we're joined by a distinguished panel of guests today in the studio. Let me start by introducing them to you, beginning with uh, Professor N.K. Goel, uh, the president of uh, CMAI and chairman of uh, TEMA as well. We also have with us uh, Mr. Srijan Pal Singh, a social media expert with us, and also Dr. Yatan Pal Singh Balhara, associate professor of uh, psychiatry in AIMS, uh, somebody who also heads uh, the Internet de Addiction Center in All India Institute of Medical Sciences. So let me begin with you, uh, Dr. Balhara, to try and understand, uh, first of all, to begin with, uh, as to what exactly is internet addiction to, uh, you know, to, to uh, make our viewers understand the concept of internet addiction. See, um, uh, to begin with, I'll say that internet addiction actually is a misnomer. Uh, actually, addiction is not to the internet. It's rather to an activity or a behavior that we access through internet. So probably a more accurate description is behavioral addictions that involve use of internet. But you are correct that internet addiction is probably the most commonly known term uh, worldwide. What it means is that uh, you are using internet in a pattern that is maladaptive, that is unhealthy and probably unsafe as well. So you might be using it for extended period of time. You might be using it in a way that is controlling your daily schedule. You might be using it in a, may, in a, in a manner that you are preoccupied with internet e even when you are not using it per se. Mm -hmm. And finally, your use of internet may be leading to some adverse consequences. So in a nutshell, that is what internet addiction means. Okay. Uh, Mr. Singh, internet is, is a boon, you know. Uh, whatever we want, we can go on to the internet, look for it. Uh, it's, it's a, you know, a store for information and it is used by almost everyone. Uh, this is seen as a boon. So where did this uh, entire issue about addiction come into play and how? See, internet is uh, not only a boon, it is also a business. And uh, today the internet driven business is, is the most, the fastest growing segment in the business. Uh, social media, if I take up, because uh, the advertising on social media is now reaching to a 420, uh, uh, 4.2 lakh crores. Mm -hmm. So huge number. Rupees 4.2 lakh crores is the ad revenues on social media today. Mm -hmm. Four and a half lakh crores is the expected increase in, uh, in ad spendings overall in media segment, out of which 95% will come from mobile phone advertising. So mobile phone and mobile social media driven advertising is driving businesses today. And that huge amount of money is there to get people's eyeballs. And this eyeball catching business is what is causing the addiction. Today you have, uh, uh, if uh, WhatsApp alone has 1.2 billion users worldwide, out of which about 250 million exist in India. 60 billion messages are sent every day. That is uh, roughly if you uh, 60 messages per person per day is what WhatsApp usage is happening. Okay. So I think it's business-driven interest which has led us to extensive advertising, cheaper mobile phones, faster internet, and a wide variety of content which is coming on the internet has led to the... Uh, the issues of uh, internet addiction. And that also explains uh, the, uh, you know, increase in uh, use of uh, data, which I was uh, pointing out earlier, from 200 uh, million GB to 1.3 billion uh, uh, gigabytes. That's, that's a very, very significant jump. Let's, let's also bring in uh, Professor Goel here. Uh, Professor Goel, uh, to, uh, you know, understand the entire aspect more clearly, you know, as uh, uh, Mr. Singh has also pointed out, that it is not only boon, it is a business as well, and the entire race uh, in which... Uh, 
everybody is is out there to try and catch eyeballs on uh, several devices on which we use internet somehow or the other there seems to be a contradiction here one way say that technology is very very helpful it's very important as well but it also has uh, some dangers lurking around the corner yeah actually it's correct technology is there it is useful as for internet concern internet is going to stay in the world nobody can do anything with it with the increasing role of e-commerce digital payment social media it has become a part of life of all of us and government after government world over are trying to increase the penetration to connect the unconnected also addiction part as is rightly said by our professor from aims is not addiction internet but the behavior part of the internet mm -hmm. and i think uh, either now or we say later what is lacking is how does we explain to our younger generation that use internet for your purpose in a good way not going beyond the line and not eating food and not going to schools and not going to play that is where the problem is but internet as a country we need it it has to stay it will stay okay so clearly internet is here to stay uh, and uh, you know as uh, uh, mr singh is also pointing out obviously both from uh, the uh, information point of view as well as from business point of view uh, dr balara if you look at uh, the addiction part of it uh, and uh, behavioral uh, you know uh, addiction you you termed it now there are several categories there are studies as well for example uh, some studies indicate that uh, more susceptible groups are uh, the youth be it the students or the professionals as well mm -hmm. how would you categorize them and how would you look at several aspects of uh, this particular uh, uh, disease if i may call it see if i have to share the experience that we have had from our clinic at teams we run a behavioral addictions clinic on saturdays at teams so the most common age group that we cater to is from 16 to 24 years of age and that's exactly what you are pointing at as well because this is the population group who is using internet from their childhood onwards uh, those who are in their late 30s and 40s they started using internet when they were in their 20s or even early 30s so they probably did not use internet the way the youth is using as of today for our youth internet is an integral part of their life so what happens is that you are being exposed to an agent for some it becomes a problem as well and that's where the addiction part comes in so people are using internet most of the younger generation is using it but some they happen to use it in a very unhealthy manner mm -hmm. and that unhealthy manner is a reflection of addiction part of it okay but uh, you know there are several terms uh, you know in fact uh, those uh, must be some of them uh, must be medical terms as well uh, there are terms like uh, nomophobia fomo as in um, the fear of uh, missing out then you call it uh, internet gaming disorder igd then you have iad internet addiction disorder then fad facebook addiction disorder and selfitis uh, Uh, something which is to do with uh, you know clicking mm -hmm. selfies and posting them immediately mm -hmm. on your social media accounts uh, and then uh, phantom vibration syndrome as well wherein uh, somebody would uh, you know feel uh, vibration uh, even if the phone is not around so are these uh, rightly categorized dr balara and and is there something else also other than that uh, these terms they are very commonly used uh, most of these are layman's terms i would say so Uh, some of these are technical terms as well for example if you look at the term gaming disorder world health organization has included it as a medical disorder now so it's a valid mental and behavioral disorder similarly the american psychiatric association it recognizes internet gaming disorder as a valid behavioral addiction mm -hmm. but rest of the terms they don't find a place in the diagnostic systems but yes researchers and academics world over they use most of these terms Uh, the problem with that use is that there is no uniform nomenclature so what somebody means with nomophobia might not be exactly the same because it's not a universally accepted definition of that term but yes what these terms represent that's a very real phenomena that is something that we see in our clinics as well okay mr singh a very interesting aspect of this entire situation is that uh, internet is uh, a storehouse of information and everything which we are talking about is available on internet as well uh, and you know those uh, that segment which we are speaking on that is 16 to 24 as dr balara pointed out uh, is uh, is a segment wherein uh, those youngsters uh, use internet for getting more information on so 
wouldn't they be getting information on these aspects as well, these terms like nomophobia, FOMO, or cellphitis and all that? Isn't, is, is, is it a lack of awareness uh, here, which I don't believe uh, can be the issue because it's, it's, uh, information is available there, but rather willing, uh, willingness to overlook these aspects? See, uh, internet sounds as if it's free and fair. It's not. There is certain content which is targeted at certain individuals for business interest, usually. So uh, it's not that things like nomophobia and FOMO and similar things are the first things which you see when you go on Facebook. You see something else. You see your friend vacationing in the best holiday destination you can think of. And that is what triggers internet addiction because everybody sees content which is targeted at them, usually to sell a certain product or service. And the entire world seems to be a very distorted picture. And in that distorted picture, what happens is what doctor was saying, the social behavior starts changing because sort of somehow I feel that everybody's going on a vacation, everybody's running a marathon, everybody seems to be doing so well in life, and it's only I who's left out. That's what FOMO is. So the fear of, getting, of missing out. And similar such issues keep coming up. Uh, addictions such as, you know, the whole trend of uh, before you eat anything, you put it on Instagram. That has just caught up. Things like Kiki, the, the, whole, the whole dance move. The Kiki challenge. The Kiki challenge, and it killed a lot of people, it, it injured a lot of people, was something which started as an internet phobia, inter internet phenomena, and it ultimately became um, uh, no short of an addiction. So internet is not flat in terms of information. So you don't find these information which are hazardous to the social media channels on social media were there to put something else. Okay, uh, that's that's also uh, very interesting. Uh, Professor Goyal, if you look at uh, the industry aspect of it, and uh, since there are, uh, you know, social media giants uh, like uh, Google, Facebook, uh, uh, WhatsApp, uh, and uh, Instagram, and other, other websites, Twitter. So the important question here is that some responsibility lies with these uh, companies as well, with the industry as well. Is they, are they aware of, uh, you know, doing it uh, or rather addressing this particular aspect in one way or the other? Okay. Before I answer that question, I, I want to supplement what my colleague Singh has said. The problem, as you said, it's flat. If, if I type suicide, it will give us 100 ways how to commit a suicide, but it will not say why not to commit suicide. So anything which is negative for internet business will not come up in the Google search first. Mm -hmm. And that is the problem we face. If you type drinking or wine or whiskey, it will give you one lakh pages of the whiskey details, but not it is not good for health. Okay. Give me the nearest shop actually. Yeah, in their shop. <laughs> now coming to this thing, the prime purpose of internet companies and unluckily none of them are from India. They are from other countries. Mm -hmm. As a businessman, their main concern is how do we earn money? How do we increase the eyeballs? How do we increase the revenues? How do we increase the numbers? So officially they will say, yes, we are interested and we have a policy and you can see on the website, it is not good for health, you should do so and so. But that comes up in page 18 or 20 or 30. So it is not known to them. And yes, as a company, they are not so sincere or so genuinely interested to bring out the pitfalls. Mm -hmm. Why? Because one single thing is, there is no social media company of the world who is doing promotion on how to use these things, okay. how to safeguard these things. Take the example of mobile phone. No mobile company in the world will say, use it in this way so that you don't get some issues. Mm -hmm. Internet, no internet company will say use it that way. And that's where, again, I'm repeating the role of the governments comes up. I think our government, two, three departments together should come out, make it a part of curriculum. Okay. As now we are talking of the fake news also in the curriculum, make it a part of curriculum that use it positively. Okay, so, so make people more aware that that aspect uh, Professor Goyal is pointing out. Uh, Dr. Balara, since uh, you're uh, heading a, you know, um, a department and a unit there, uh, which is known as the Addiction Center, one, uh, we would be interested in knowing uh, what kind of cases, uh, you know, uh, you are uh, uh, resolving as of now, what kind of patients you have. And in addition to that, uh, where does the solution lie to this entire problem? Because uh, as Professor Goyal pointed out, uh, 
with the companies, with the internet giants, obviously, uh, you know, asking them to take uh, onus uh, would be a little asking too much. Yeah. So the most common presentation to our clinic is people who are at the extreme end of this addiction, uh, people who are actually suffering because of it. So we are getting cases such as uh, a kid is not going to school for the last six months because he wants to stay back and play a game. We are getting an engineering calling student who has been thrown out of the college because he did not attend even a single class in the last semester. We are getting kids who won't take a bath for the last 30 days because they don't want to, they don't want to miss out on the next episode on the Netflix. So we are getting the extreme end of the spectrum and that is usually what happens in a hospital setting. People turn up to us when things go to the extreme end. But that's just a small proportion that we are talking about. There is a vast majority who are having a problematic internet use. They are not yet there, but probably they are inching towards that. And this is the population that needs to be seen from the preventive perspective. Mm -hmm. That what we need to do to prevent them from reaching that stage where they probably will end up if we don't do anything. And that's where we are trying to do certain things. We are going into the schools, colleges. Uh, we are carrying out these awareness campaigns. We are talking on what is called a uh, safe and healthy use of internet. Now the challenge that the generation is facing is nobody teaches them that what internet is, what is the good side of it, what is the bad part of it. And that's their challenge because they are just thrown into that pool and then they have to survive on their own. Some of them who are lucky, they do well. Some who are unlucky and unfortunate probably don't do that well and they end up in clinics like ours. So we need to talk about prevention as well as treatment for those who have already reached the addiction phase of it. Okay, uh, that's that's interesting, and and uh, since we are looking at uh, you know ways to address this issue, uh, Mr. Singh, uh, Dr. Balara has pointed out the awareness campaigns. Uh, uh, Professor Goyal has pointed out how the government can go ahead and bring in some guidelines from the social media perspective of it, and from the user perspective specifically. What is it that can be done? See, first, uh, statistically, we spend 200 minutes a day on internet. An average Indian does. That's about 11 years of your lifetime you are on the internet, usually on the mobile phone. I think from a user perspective, some very good strategies actually come up which we need to learn from. First is there's a whole strategy of community fighting back against addiction. There are restaurants in US and in Japan and many other countries in the world which offer 20% discount if you don't use a smartphone and you keep your smartphone away. So community gives support to people to de-addict themselves of smartphones. Uh, a few easy solutions is is to wear a wristwatch. If you wear a wristwatch, you don't have the urgency to go to your mobile and check the time. The moment you check the time, you start also seeing other messages who have come and then the process starts. Uh, a simple way which people have implemented is not to use mobile phone as an alarm clock. Use an alarm clock separately because the moment you set alarm, you see all the messages before you go to sleep. When you wake up, you again see all the messages as the alarm goes off. So you have to de-addict. We all need to de-addict ourselves. Uh, corporate, uh, one big uh, uh, segment in this stakeholder is the corporate sector, which should not really expect people to answer messages immediately, mm -hmm. unless it's an urgent job, which I can understand, but that's about 10%. 90% jobs could wait for one hour for emails to be replied. So that implementation of healthy internet practice has to not only exist in schools, but also when people go to jobs. Nobody should expect emails to be answered immediately. Okay. The uh, other, and I think the most important aspect of all this is parenting and schooling. Uh, I have seen several times where in, in airplanes when children cry, the first thing the, the parents give them is a, is, a, hand over the phone. is a hand over the phone with a YouTube video and the children are watching this instead of investing their own time in their children. I think that's the stage at which we need to de-addict children out of it before we get into the youth stage. Okay, so so they, these are, a, you know, it's a multi-pronged solution. We all need to encourage each other to healthy internet usage is fine. I'm not trying to say the internet is a bad thing. Internet is a great thing, but excess of anything is bad. Okay, internet is a great thing and excess of anything is bad. Interesting, uh, but uh, very true as well. Uh, Professor Goyal, would you like to add on to all these solutions which, uh, you know, Mr. Singh and Dr. Balara is pointing out? Yeah, actually, as a association dealing in mobile telecom and education, I'm happy to know from my colleague from AIMS that they are doing the awareness camps we also do this thing and we also do some program called internet safe day usage mm -hmm. what we have been promoting to every one of them something is that why should you have one mobile phone for everything for voice for whatsapp for email for this thing try to segregate it that is one message which we give to all the college all the students 
so that you can have use the voice phone and leave whatsapp etc for some time secondly as singh says we have been trying to educate to students and their parents don't expect answer back just immediately after 5 minutes these are the two messages which are different and i am happy to say that in three four colleges we were uh, able to ban the use of mobile phone in the college okay during college hours so so that's that's interesting these are these are all other as well let me go back to dr balara here dr balara uh, these are the preventive measures but uh, if you look at other segments as well which are catching a fast for example as as was pointed out by mr uh, singh as well uh, young professionals mm -hmm. working people the work life balance seems mm -hmm. to go uh, you know um, out of hand for them because they devote uh, more time to their cell phones or to their screens uh, you know uh, on the internet on uh, various platforms uh, available there social media or gaming or whichever way mm -hmm. it is so uh, is that segment more affected or is, is the, the more younger ones the students are are the ones which are more affected in if you do a comparative analysis uh, i would say both uh, from slightly different perspective and point of view for children i would say that they are not yet there they are on that path to be there some day uh, for children i would say that they are probably using internet for things they actually don't need to use it for uh, it's okay to use internet or a whatsapp for maybe a class work related thing i mean you need to make projects you need to access information for that that's okay but uh, having a group on whatsapp and you need to be part of it simply because you don't want to miss out on being part of that group playing a game on mobile phone rather than going out in the play field is probably not the done thing staying in the room and being in that world of your own with your friends on your laptop or computer rather than me meeting them in person uh, maybe for a uh, for a movie or just for a chat or a, just a stroll down the lane so that is the way children are using internet and that's the problem there when it comes to the young professionals it's probably demand of their work Mm -hmm. that's making them access internet more than what they should be doing so from that perspective we need to bring in that work life balance as you are talking about for the professionals now what we need to see here as well is that as i told earlier internet is not a bad thing in itself and we all agree on that and a great example is that if you look at the medical literature people who use, use internet for work for example emails for work or for academic reasons even if they use it slightly more they are not addicted to it okay because it's part of their job the problem is the reasons behind use when you use internet to feel good when you need internet to feel better about yourself when you need internet to escape from the reality of the world around you those are the pointers that reflect a more problematic use so if as a professional your internet use is not just for your work but for the reasons to make feel yourself feel good or to be using it as a substitute as compared to the real life situations then we need to do something about that proactively so so, so is it is it more of a health issue or is it more of a social issue uh, with uh, from from your aspect because all these are uh, you know points which we are talking about have to do uh, are to do with the the way a person behaves be it uh, or you know conducts himself uh, be it in the office environment or at home or maybe somewhere else in the society yeah. see when it comes to human behavior and that is true for internet use as well it's a mix of all the things actually we use a term called as biopsychosocial approach there are social factors there are psychological factors and there are biological factors as well so when we talk about internet use for the population in general we are talking about a lifestyle and that's a social thing a very personal kind of a thing that everybody needs to do but then there are are a few of us who have reached the stage of addiction and that's where the medical dimension comes in and there you need to have a very structured kind of an intervention for that okay so so there should be intervention uh, uh, before it becomes a health issue uh, mr singh uh, would you like to uh, you know uh, let's uh, since we are concluding the show would you like to give some uh, piece of advice to all those who are watching us uh, or maybe at a later stage will watch us uh, on youtube again by using internet okay so you're using youtube to begin with uh see i think uh, we all need to be aware that such an addiction exists sometimes uh, uh, internet is something which is not a drug so it's very difficult for us to uh, even believe that uh, i am affected by internet addiction it's important to uh, seek other people's opinion am i using internet too much there's a lot of statistical data which is available at your disposal you can pick up your whatsapp and find out how many messages you have sent and how many you have received if you're sending more messages than what you're receiving you're probably addicted to whatsapp 
and it'll be interesting if you find out thousands of messages you're sending uh, every month. So keep, keep a tab on how much time you're spending on internet. Internet keeps your history. You can figure out what are the times in which you are accessing, what sites you're accessing, how much you're spend, spend, spending time. Keep, a, keep mm -hmm. a tab of yourself. Just like you keep a tab of everything, the calories which you eat, also keep a tab of the bites which you consume. Uh, corporate, if you're a boss, if you're uh, you uh, in a setting where uh, you know, people work for you, it's important to enforce a culture where it's okay to not respond to messages immediately. If we are in the government, I think it's important to uh, fund and uh, research in this direction and encourage people like uh, Dr. Saab uh, here mm -hmm. to uh, help uh, young children and young professionals not get addicted to such issues. So it's a multi-pronged issue. It's an upcoming problem. The, the only thing is a lot of denial will happen. Nobody wants to admit to the fact that I'm That they're addict. addicted to anything. Any be, addicted. Be, be it the internet, internet seems to be the worst thing to get addicted to. It's the most seemingly benign thing huh. and uh, less lethal than a drug. So nobody wants to admit it. And that's where I think children have, at least parents are monitoring, young professionals. Uh, internet addiction is uh, one of the top three causes of divorces in the West. Well, so yes, one, one uh, uh, definitely. <laughs> that is uh, a much uh, serious problem out there as well. So as our panelists are pointing out, that uh, addiction to internet is uh, not just a serious health issue, but also it affects the work-life balance. Now, with access to internet becoming easier and cheaper, this problem can only worsen unless common sense prevails. For those of us who have unlimited access to the internet, the solution is to stay prudent and know when to log out. We'll come back again tomorrow with a different topic and different set of guests. Till then, keep watching Rajasabha Television.